the book of Genesis. Bear with me, I'm trying to find the verse I want to start. Let's go to verse number 3. Genesis 4 and starting with verse number 3. Please stay with me. Don't allow the familiarity of Scripture to cause you to disconnect, okay? Genesis 4 and verse 3. I'm reading from the New King James. It says, In the process of time... Something how time has a process really does. you got to know this in your life and mine. Time has a process. That's just bonus. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord, everybody say the Lord. The Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. In plain English, he was mad, and you could see it on his face. You ever see somebody and you're like, oh, they're mad. Now, so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? Let me ask you a question. Did the Lord know why? I don't know how the Lord talks to you. He talks to us all differently. You can read the first three chapters of Revelation and you see the different elements of of the Lord. And then you see him talking to each church with a different element. So the Lord talks to us all differently. But this gives me hope because the Lord almost most often when the Lord speaks to me, he speaks to me through questions. He'll ask me a question. And they're always rhetorical questions. I promise you the Lord doesn't ask you a question he does not know the answer to. He's just wanting you and I to acknowledge what he already knows. Because if we'll we'll acknowledge it, then he can begin to help us. And so he asked this question of Cain. Why are you angry and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? So it was an acceptance issue. Again, the Lord is asking Cain questions, trying to get Cain to acknowledge what's going on in his heart. The Lord is not confused about what Cain is going through. The Lord is not ignorant of what Cain is going through. But the Lord is trying to get Cain to acknowledge where he is to save Cain from his own destructive behavior. Cain, if you do well, if you do, won't you be accepted? So see the Lord. Every word of the scripture is so precious, isn't it? It really is. Every word of the scripture is so precious. And every word of the scripture has value and purpose for being placed there. There are no filler words in Scripture. And so the Lord, notice his pattern of questions to Cain. So so now, if you do well, this is a conditional question now. Again, it is the Word of God, it is the voice of God reaching into Cain's heart, trying to get Cain to acknowledge where he is. Why? Because the Lord wants to smack him upside the head? The Lord loves Cain. You believe that? The Lord cares about him. 
And so the loving creator is asking his creation, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And so it's revealing something. The question is revealing an area in Cain that the Lord is trying to work with and help. You know, you and I sometimes, I I shouldn't say you and I, I, I don't know about you. I have a good idea because you're human. I sometimes ask questions and I'm not necessarily trying to help. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I hope you're laughing with me and not at me. My wife is just smiling and being kind. I'll ask her questions sometimes and I'm not trying to help. I'm trying to make a point, Brother Matt. And that's not always right. My point may be right, but my spirit may be wrong. The Lord doesn't operate that way. When the Lord is asking us a question, He has a pure motive. He has our best interests in mind. He's not asking us questions to smack us upside the head, to make us feel condemnation and guilt and shame. He's asking us questions. If it pricks something in our heart, it's because he's trying to get us to acknowledge what he already knows. Because if we'll acknowledge it in our dialogue with him, he can then begin to minister and help us. This is the desire of God. And that's exactly what's taking place with Cain. The Lord is trying to save Cain from himself. And so he's asking him questions. They're not questions of judgment or condemnation. It's not God being passive aggressive with Cain. It's God seeking to rescue a man who started to entertain things in his thoughts The enemy has got him starting to entertain stuff because something didn't go the way he wanted it to go. And when it didn't go his way, he got angry. It was God that didn't accept the offering, yes? But Cain said, you don't accept me. because And the Lord knew that. How did the Lord knew that? And how do we know that? Because God's question of Cain is, will you not be accepted? He didn't say, would your offering not be accepted? For Cain, it was an offering that wasn't accepted. But the Lord knows the heart of a man, doesn't He? He knows my heart. He knows your heart. And so when He asked the question, He went beyond the offering. He said, Cain, you're looking at this offering that I didn't accept, and you're thinking I didn't accept you. If you'll get the offering right, I'll accept the offering. But Cain, I accepted you. See how the enemy works? And so rather than us hearing the question of the Lord and going, Okay, Lord, I know that you've accepted me, but clearly something I'm doing or have done is not acceptable to you. Bring correction in my life. Bring instruction in my life. I want to please you. Your question's trying to reveal something, God. I want to be in agreement with you. I'm not questioning your acceptance of me. But the Lord was addressing that because that's what Cain had done. Cain was as human as you and I. We're taking a whole lot longer to get where I thought we're going. We ain't even got to the verse yet. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Cain, if you do well, won't you be accepted? Now, Let me just say this, in case you didn't know it, the scripture declares that you and I are accepted in the beloved. See, this is is one of the greatest deceptions of the adversary. The adversary wants you and I to believe that he will accept you. The world will accept you. However you are, doesn't matter, will accept you. Well, there's a... This is the the greatest lie is always the one that has a thread of truth. Because that makes the lie credible to some degree. And you realize it's a lie too late. And so if the world accepts me as I am, 
The church has expectations. The word of God has expectations. Living for God comes with conditions. It does come with conditions. We don't earn salvation. It's by grace. We're saved by grace through faith. But when we begin to live for God, our life says, I want to please God. And so I begin making changes in agreement with his word to please him who has purchased me with his own blood. Amen? When I married my wife, she didn't say, hey, before we get married, I got a list of conditions. She probably had them, but she didn't list them out. She had some expectation. And now after 32 and a half years of marriage, what's happened? We begin to learn what things please one another. I don't have a list in my back pocket that goes, oh, yeah, I, I got to do that. That's pleasing to my wife. That back. May, oh, babe, where's this on your list? No, no. My walk is such that I enjoy, I find pleasure in doing things that please her. And so my lifestyle changes through the years to please my wife. We understand that, don't we? And so it is in living for God. But the world says, you don't have to change anything. However you are, whatever. And so the world will accept us. But the world won't tell you. If you don't allow the love of God and the word of God and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to change your life and work in your life and transform you, living however you choose will ultimately be your destruction. You do not well. This is the warning from the Lord. Notice the Lord is now not asking a question. He's given Cain a chance to respond. He's tried to get Cain to acknowledge what's going on in his thoughts and his heart. And then he addresses with a direct statement. Cain, if you don't do well, sin's lying at your door. And sin's desire is for you. Sin wants you. Those thoughts you're entertaining, Cain, they want you. They want to take hold of your life and ultimately destroy you. But really, Cain, you should be ruling over it. You understand the Lord created us to have dominion over sin. And here you see it mentioned. Cain, you should be ruling over it. But if you don't do well, what's going to happen is you're going to step through that door, that thought that you've been entertaining, that thing that's been there pulling on you that you think is the difference because you feel like you were rejected because you brought an offering that was in the natural rather than something I produced. That was the issue. If you step through that door of thought, you're entertaining, Cain. You're giving up dominion of something you should have dominion over. It will rule over you instead of you ruling over it. Now, verse 8. Man, we're taking them. So watch. Now Cain talked. We know this story. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. He stepped through the door. God gave him opportunity God gave him opportunity to acknowledge what was going on in his heart and let God help him. But rather, he stepped through the door where sin was waiting. And sin's desire to have him was one. We won't read the whole chapter, but you would see the result of that choice. So he rose up and killed his brother Abel, verse 9. Now the Lord comes with another question. Do you see this pattern of the Lord now? Maybe you haven't thought about it before, but I want you to see it. Because He deals with us still this way. It's the love of God that asks you these questions. So sometimes when you're hearing the ministry of the Word through Elder Flowers, myself, somebody else, and they're like, man, they're asking me these questions. Sometimes what the Lord is doing is say, yeah, I'm digging in there a little bit, Brother Jacinto. I'm wanting, not me, the Lord is saying, I want you to acknowledge this question that feels like it's confronting you. It's not confronting you to hurt you. The love of God is confronting you with the truth so that you and I have an opportunity to acknowledge 
It's an opening and saying, Lord, I need your help. And so he asked him another question. Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And isn't this interesting? This is, you, there is so much wrapped up in here. We just don't have time today. This is the condition of a heart that is given into sin and has now begun rejecting God. He believed a lie that God rejected him. God did not reject him. God rejected the offering and gave him an opportunity to make it right. But he took it as God rejected him. And so this is the enemy twisting. You see this? And this still happens in our world today. And this is the enemy twisting and then saying, so now Cain is rejecting God. And you see it in his words. Because the Lord asked him a question. Where's Abel, your brother? And we see almost, I, I'm not trying to add to scripture. I'm just telling you how I perceive it at times when I read this. We almost see a sarcasm, if you will, or a, a cynicism from Cain's response. Does that make sense? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? An, an attitude with God. I know none of you have ever gotten an attitude with God. <laughs> I'm guilty. And so you see, this is the progression of that sin. And he asked the question, am I my brother's keeper? Now, I want you to pray with me again. Because all of that was introduction and we took longer than I planned. We'll probably go a little faster now. But I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't you feel the Holy Ghost helping us today? Can we talk to the Lord right where we are? Lord, we need your word. We trust your word. We trust the leading and the operation of your spirit. We can do absolutely nothing of value in your kingdom of ourselves. I pray the ministry of your word and spirit in our lives. You who knows our frame, reach in as only you can. Let the living word of God write upon the fleshy tables of our heart to equip us, Lord, to heal us, Lord, to shape and fashion us, Lord, in your image. Let the word of God accomplish what you intend here among each and every one of us today, O oh God. Anoint lips of clay. Anoint our ears to hear. And let your living word, I pray, issue forth forth into our lives that we would be strengthened and directed by you for your purpose and your glory in the name of Jesus I pray in the name of Jesus I pray so we come to this point I want to talk to you today for just a, just a few more minutes about being your brother's keeper Now you see things in this story, we, we touched on some of them in these last few minutes, that led up to him getting to this place. Cain didn't just arrive there. They're grown men now, yes? He's a grown man now. We're in a room full of mostly grown people now. I know there's a few young people in here and you think you're grown, but trust me, you, you got a little to go yet. But, but stay in the race. I, I got confidence in you. I'm believing you. But these are grown men now. But i got to believe, you know, we, we don't know, I don't think we know anyway, how far apart Cain and Abel were in age. Always wondered that. But I just got to believe they were boys together somewhere along the way. They probably, I don't know, they probably skipped rocks across the river together. They probably dunked each other in the water. They probably climbed trees together. They probably ran through the woods together as kids. They probably, you know, wrestled one another outside. They were kids. Grew up together, probably knew each other better than anybody else, right? I mean, didn't have a whole lot of people to play with. <laughs> I don't know if you ever thought about that. They were brothers. 
They were brothers. They knew one another. They were of the same family. But something crept in along the way. We, saw, we see a microcosm of it here that's revealed to us in Scripture. I don't think that that one offering is... It was simply the crux of the matter, if you will. One offering doesn't cause a person to kill their brother. There was something that had sort of crept in there, I believe, through the years in the way Cain saw Abel and God's response to Abel. And Cain was given opportunity maybe to get... But he just couldn't bring himself to please God. And it seemed like Abel had a life that just pleased God. And rather than that being an example to Cain and Cain continuing to learn and grow and say, man, this is my brother. He can help me and I can help him. And together we can, we can do this. Cain let something begin to get in his spirit. I, I don't know if it was comparison or competition or jealousy. or I don't know, but something got in there to the point that a brother as an adult would kill his brother. And I know that would never happen to us. We would never allow something to get into our spirit towards a brother or sister, though small, that could grow and and magnify and become to influence my thoughts and my thinking and my actions to where I begin to do things that are contrary to the will of God and what pleases God. But that's exactly what happened to him. Cain, where's your brother? I don't know. Am I supposed to be keeping up with my brother? It was a rhetorical question. What's the answer? Am I my brother's keeper? What's the answer? It's a yes or no. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Some of you are scared to say it. And I'm not just being funny. Some of you are scared to say it. We are our brother's keeper. We are meant to be the keeper of our brother and our sister. The Lord doesn't ask questions he doesn't know the answer to. And the reality is you and I know the answer. But if we're not careful, we'll let something get in our spirit like God in Cain's spirit. And we'll resist answering what we know to be truth. Because speaking truth obligates me to the truth. And I don't want to commit myself to something that I'm struggling with. We're getting a whole lot plainer than I thought we would. I feel the Holy Ghost seeking to help us And I'm not even sure why we're here, but here we are. Yes, I'm my brother's keeper. Yes, you're your brother's keeper. I have a question for you. You guys are scared to answer questions. (laughs) It's okay. Here's a question for you. Was Cain... Abel's enemy. Was Abel Cain's enemy? No. Did Cain see Abel as his enemy? I don't know. He saw him as something other than his brother. You see, here's something we have to know. Our brother is not our enemy. I know this is simple. I'm a simple person. It's how God talks to me. Our brother and our sister are not our enemy. An enemy is someone you are at war with. And if, you, if I said that and you were like, well, I'm at war with a brother or sister, then you need to make sure before we leave today you get to the altar.
Our brother and our sister are not our enemy. Will we have disagreements? You bet we will. We're human. That doesn't make me your enemy. See, we got to be careful or we'll get it twisted. And we start fighting the wrong things. And why would the adversary cause this to take place? Well, because if I can get Cain and Abel to destroy one another... If I can get a brother or a sister to believe their brother or their sister or their enemy, I just get out of the way. They'll destroy one another. You know what one of the greatest loss of American lives were in our nation? What was it? Civil War. The per capita loss. One of the greatest per... And you know what? In most nations, that's true. What is it? It's brother fighting against brother. Sister fighting against sister. Getting them to destroy one another. I just spent a couple of weeks in Ireland and I was so... I, you, you just would not believe. You would not believe there is still strong tension there. People of the same nation, all Irish, but they made decisions about sides a, a little while back. And when there are even groups of people that just spontaneously, they come together, they get a band, a marching band together. There's 15 or 20 of them and they have a crowd following through town and they play songs and they beat and the songs remind them of who won. And they carry a flag that represents who won and wave it. And, they, and you think I'm making this up. I'm telling you, it happened while Autumn and I were there at 9.30 at night all of a sudden. I get a video from uh, Brother Pedro and Sister Maria, and it's a group of people. I mean, they're dressed up. They got their hats. They got their... And at 9.30 at night, they decided we're, it's time to declare that we won. I, I'm dead serious. I couldn't believe it. And they're parading through town. Boom, 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 boom. And... and and the Guzman said, you know, people see this and they think, oh, this is so cool. This is so neat. How just, you know, just any time there's a little parade and here goes the music and the flag. And, you know, there's people. That's so cool. No, what it is, it's one brother saying, I won. I beat my other brother and now you're under my thumb. That's really what it is. It's, it's a, that's why they do it spontaneously and repeatedly. They're not saying we defeated the enemy. They're saying, I beat my other brother. I'm going to tell you something. And I really feel the Holy Ghost right now. If you or I end up in a war with our brother or sister, And then we think we won. You are really deceived. If I went to war with a brother. And I won. And they lost. We both lost. Nobody won. Talk to the Lord right now before we go a little further. Come on, talk to the Lord. Come on, let the Holy Ghost talk to you.
Open our understanding, Lord. Open our understanding, Lord. We are our brother's keeper. We do bear up one another. We do bear up one another. Disagreements are not places of war and defining of enemies. Disagreements are simply part of humanity. But I am my brother's keeper. I will bear up my brother. I'll not go to war with my brother. I'll stand for my brother. In the name of Jesus. Come on, it's the enemy that wants you to think your brother's your enemy. It's the true enemy that would try to make you think your brother or your sister is your enemy. Stop entertaining the adversary's lies. Let the Holy Ghost anoint your mind and mine with His perspective. I am my brother's keeper. I'll care for my brother. I'll bear up my brother. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a spirit of division in our world today. That's no great revelation to anybody in this room, I don't think. There is a spirit of division in our world today. It's always been there. It's just more evident than it's ever been. It's, it's becoming, it's becoming bit broader and broader and more powerful and more influential as it gets fed by different factions and different groups and different other spirits that are coming in with it. Because, and it brings confusion. And we know that's not of the Lord. The Lord is not the author of confusion. It's the God of this world that would sow division. And so what happens... We need to pray again for just a minute. Come on, pray with me, please. I believe the Holy Ghost would like to help us, but we have to be willing to let Him do so. In the name of Jesus. 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 Holy Ghost, you are our comforter. You are our help. You are the paraclete. I pray even so be it here this morning in Jesus' name. Here's what happens. That spirit of division that's in the world. When you and I entertain the things of the world... We begin to entertain that spirit of... We don't even realize it sometimes. But we begin to entertain things of the world where that spirit of division operates. And then we don't understand why we start thinking a certain way or feeling... A, and what's happened, we begin to entertain the voices of this world. It's sin that lies at the door. We've opened the door through various means of... Entertainment, and I don't just mean like Hollywood entertainment. Things we listen to, read, watch, give ear to, give eye to. People we engage in conversation with where we should have more wisdom about how far we go in a conversation. We open doors, we open doors, we open doors. And if we don't recognize them, we do that and we step through that door thinking it's a harmless conversation when we should have the wisdom of God and the Holy Ghost within us saying, hold on a minute. That's not a door I'm going through. There's something there that doesn't agree with my spirit. It doesn't agree with the spirit of God. Therefore, I close the door. I close my eyes. I shut it off. I pull the cord. I cancel the subscription. I remove the... You you fill in the blank. But I'm not giving ear and avenue to the spirit of division that's in this world. And it's magnified right now more than ever because of the political environment. You should vote. We should pray for our country. I'm not telling you. But we can get caught up in that. And it is ultra divisive. And so that spirit tries to creep into the church. And brother goes to war with brother. And sister goes to war with sister. And James talked about that. He said, that shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't be the case. Am I my brother's keeper? Are you your brother's keeper? We agree. Now watch, let me, in case you think, man, this is, we're going to shift right now, okay? You ready? So you got to close some doors. You got to close some doors. 
God won't close them for you. He will if you ask him and give him permission. But he won't just do it for you while you keep going through it. He can't go, I'm going through the door again. God, close it so I'll stop going through it. Well, he'll close it, but he's not going to take control of the knob. You've got to stop going through it. Okay, He will, with every temptation, make a way of escape. He won't get rid of the temptation. He'll make a way of escape. You better be looking for the way of escape. Now watch. You ever heard of Joseph? Boy, he and his brothers had some issues, didn't they? Joseph's brothers, the Bible says, they hated him. So much so that they were going to kill him. You see the spirit, you see how that spirit works? Same spirit, different time, different place. Same spirit, I'll kill my brother. Competition, comparison had crept in. Dad likes him more than us. You see the elements there? He's accepted him. Look at that nice coat he's got. Oh, and something started turning in there. Who should their issue have been with? Who? Their father. If you got issue, go talk to dad. He gave him the coat. <laughs> Cain, if you got issue, don't go to Abel. Who's your issue with, Cain? Who is his issue with? God. You know why Cain didn't go to God? And why the brothers didn't go to their father, Jacob? They already knew the answer. They didn't want to hear what... Cain didn't want to hear what God said. He revealed it with his attitude. Joseph's brothers didn't really want to risk what dad would say to them. And so rather than go to the one that was favoring the situation... I think the father probably saw something on Joseph's life. You know, fathers have a way of seeing things on their kids' lives. And so rather than them going to their father, they let it build resentment in their spirit. And the end was the same. We're going to kill him. Man, I feel such a warning of the Holy Ghost here today. You may think, if you're not careful, you may think, a little small element of jealousy or competition or comparison. Ah, oh, it irritates me, it frustrates me, but ah, ah. If you don't deal with that thing, get it on the altar. I'm telling you, it'll grow into something you never thought possible. It will grow into something you never thought possible. And you may end up deeply wounding your brother or sister in the process. But in so doing, you will destroy your soul if you're not careful. <laughs> Come on, talk to the Lord. Come on, I feel the love of God reaching and trying. <laughs> On your brother's not your enemy. Your sister's not your enemy. We are our brother's keeper. We're put here to bear up one another, to strengthen one another, to edify one another. You which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. You're not my enemy, you're my brother. You're my brother. So Joseph's brother wanted to destroy him. One of them said, we can't do this. He went, I don't know why he said we can't do this and then left. It's almost like, again, I'm not trying to add to scripture. I'm just telling you what it seems like to me. It's almost like he knew they shouldn't. And he satisfied his conscience by saying they shouldn't. And then disappeared from the picture like, but I'll leave them to do whatever they end up doing. Because I'm a little anti him too. I don't know. I'm not trying to add. I'm just telling you. Why did he just walk off? And so they sold him. 
And if anybody's got a right to be angry at their brother, it's Joseph. You know the story. I'm not going to take the time. We can't go through all those uh, chapters at the end of Genesis, those last 10 chapters, 11, 12 chapters. His brother sold him into slavery. He went into prison. He was lied on. You know why his brothers were angry with him? He had dreams from God. Boy, doesn't that seem like a silly reason to be angry? He had dreams from God. Careful if your brother or sister's dreams cause you to get angry with them. Joseph could have used a little wisdom probably. (laughs) Don't just go around saying, hey, I saw sheaves and they all bowed to me. Not denying the dream of the Lord, but the Lord knew what it would instigate. Did he not? And so you fast forward. Joseph is now second in command. See, I told you, we fast forwarded. After 12 years, give or take, in case you think it was just a blink and everything's fine. See, sometimes we want everything to be fixed in a hurry, and we don't, in the process of time, allow the plan of God to be revealed And rather than allow the plan of God to be revealed, this Cain, rather than allow the plan of God to be revealed, took matters in his own hands and destroyed his brother. Oh, his story could have been so different. And so Joseph, in the process of time, was elevated to second command into all of Egypt. We know the story, most of it, right? Pharaoh had a dream. Joseph interpreted the dream, told him what it meant, and then told Pharaoh what he should do. Pharaoh said, I don't know anybody as wise as this man. You should be the one that executes this plan you're describing. Congratulations, you're now second in command in all of Egypt only to me. Here's my ring. Put a robe on him. Change the way he looks. Give him a place to live. Set him up. And Joseph is now second in command. And seven years pass. So now it's been almost 20 years. Seven years of plenty and setting aside. Almost 20 years have passed since the pit. And his brothers show up. The brothers that wanted to kill him. The brothers that sold him into slavery. The brothers that stripped him of some of the best years of his life with his father. The brothers that sent him to a strange and foreign land where he knew no one. And Joseph understood. If you and I were to ask Joseph this question, what do you think he'd say? If you said, Joseph, are you your brother's keeper? Joseph understood. I am my brother's keeper. My brother's actions were meant for evil. But God. But God meant it for good. God took their actions. And Joseph had the spiritual wisdom and understanding to know. I'm my brother's keeper. So even though I'm in the place to destroy them, I would not raise my hand to destroy them. I would extend my hand to help them. Joseph had the power. Joseph had the means to destroy his brothers. And he used his power and his means to save them. That's what someone who understands that their brother's keeper does. 
They don't use power, place, position, or means to destroy a brother. They use it to sustain them. I want you to stand with me today, please. I really had another message I wanted to preach today. If I could say it that way, it wasn't a message, it's a thought that's turning in my spirit. You'll get it some other time, I guess. I want to be Joseph. I, I, I don't mean prison in Potiphar's house. <laughs> I don't mean colorful coats, and you understand. Brother Shea, I want to use everything in my God-given gifting and ability to bear up my brother. To bless my brother. To enable my brother, to walk this road in the fear of God. Some of, I did not expect where we are right now. But some of you, you're really standing at a door. What I see in the Holy Ghost, some of you are standing at a door. And the love of God today, today, the love of God is giving you opportunity to make a decision. <laughs> Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. Yes, I am. I'm opening this altar to you. Come on. Find a place to commune with God. And there's a scripture that's turning in my spirit right now that says when you bring your gift to the altar, if you got aught against your brother, then leave your gift at the altar. Get up and go to your brother and make it right. And then come back and he'll accept your gift. Do you see the connection between Cain and Abel and that gift being accepted? Come on, there's a correlation there in what Jesus was sharing when he said bring your gift to the altar. He says, I can't accept it until you get it right with your brother. The issue now isn't even the gift. The issue is your relationship with your brother. If you don't get that right, I can't accept the gift. Come on, we got to let the Holy Ghost reach into our spirit like He is today. Work these things through our heart, our mind, our thoughts, our being. Come on, pray it however you got to pray it. God, reach into every element of my heart. Reach into every element of my thoughts. Reach into every element of my conversation. Reach into every element of my speech. Reach into every element of my thinking, oh God. I need to live and walk knowing I am my brother's keeper. My brother is not my enemy. He's my brother. Together, together, we are to be used of God. Come on, the enemy would try to divide. He knows how the Lord works. And the Lord said this. Come on, you're praying, but watch what the Lord said. This is how the world will know that you are my disciples. They're going to know because of your love one for another. And so the enemy says, I want to keep the world from knowing his disciples. So if I can get division so a brother doesn't love a brother, I rob the testimony of his disciples. Come on, purpose today. I got a testimony. I love my brother. I love my sister. I am their keeper. We're walking the road together. I have enemies spiritually, but it is not my brother. It is not my sister.
Hallelujah. Come on, as some of you are praying, you may not have the ability to go to that brother or sister for whatever reason. This is a matter of your heart in relationship to God right now. And what He's working out in you, you letting Him do it. You letting Him do it. Well, and the Lord is asking questions today, not to condemn, but to allow us to acknowledge and let Him heal and make whole and send us forward in the work of the kingdom of God. taking place as you speak out as you speak out God I'll not hold on to bitterness any longer I release it today by the help of the Lord by the grace of God I let go of bitterness I let go of resentment I let go of competition I curse jealousy at the root and I pray the liberty of the Lord I release those things I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind over your heart over your spirit Well, some of you would say, but you don't know what my brother did. You don't know what my sister did. You don't know what they said. You don't know. That's right. I don't know. And I don't need to know. The Lord knows. Come on. Joseph knew what his brothers did to him. But he had a deeper understanding. I can preserve them. And in preserving them, I'll save a nation. Joseph's preserving of his brothers was the foundation of the nation of Israel. If he would have destroyed his brothers. Come on, release today. Release in the Holy Ghost. Pray a prayer. I release it. Any bitterness, any resentment, any unforgiveness, any ill will. I release it in the name of Jesus. 